that's lost. Amen. He didn't yes. come down here to make everything. Amen. What we wanted it to be. But he come to seek and to save that was lost. Amen. Amen. Because hell is prepared for the devil. Amen. Amen. His angels. Amen. If you're not born again, amen, you go to hell. It's as simple as it is. Amen. There's people sitting around and they're waiting on something. Amen. To take place. They're waiting on somebody to tell them something. They're waiting to get right. Amen. But today, the Bible said today, amen, is the day of salvation. Amen. If you hear his voice, amen, heart not. Amen. Your heart. Amen. A lot of people waiting. Amen. Till something comes along. Amen. To shake them. Amen. To wake them. Amen. But sometimes it might be a car wreck. And you ain't got time. Amen. To get right. It might be a sudden. Amen. Heart attack. Hit you. And you ain't got time. To get your life in order. Amen. Today's a day. Amen. Why the blood is a flowing in your veins. Amen. Today's a day. Amen. To call upon. Amen. A risen Savior. Doug, I'm glad I'm serving. Amen. A living God. Amen. God's not dead. Amen. Amen. Didn't come to preach. Didn't come not to. But I'll tell you what. I'm glad I know I'm ready. Amen. Amen. I don't got to call somebody and ask them, am I ready? Amen. You know if you're ready or not. Amen. And if you ain't ready, today's the day to get ready. Amen. I'd be scared to death, Daddy, if I was living in this life today with everything that's going on, with all the diseases, earthquakes, and all the wars, and rumors of wars. Doug, my heart would probably fail me too. Amen. If it's so worried because I didn't know what's on tomorrow. But you know what? I I know who holds it all in the palm of his hand. And I know my life. It ain't hid, amen. But Jesus is in control. Amen. Jesus will be the one to say when you live or when you die. Amen. It don't matter what you catch or don't catch. God is still in control. Amen. I've known a lot of good people die of cancer. And it wasn't because they was lost or, or didn't have the Holy Ghost or, or wasn't good people. Uh, amen. You know what? Uh, amen. Everybody in this world. Uh, amen. With the Lord coming back. Uh, amen. If he withhold his coming, uh, you're going to die of something. Uh, whether it be cancer, a stroke, a heart attack. Uh, amen. AIDS or some other thing. Uh, a car wreck or a gunshot by a robbery. Uh, uh, maybe you cleaned it, went off. Uh, amen. Amen. A lot of people don't know. I don't know how I'm going to die. Don't believe I want to know. Amen. All I know is that I'm going to live. Amen. He's going to set a time. Amen. He's going to call. Job said I would. Amen. You'd hide me in the grave. Amen. Until your wrath is passed. And you'd set a time and you'd call. He said, no, I'll answer. Amen. You know what? I believe he's going to call us. Amen. One day. It don't matter if we die today or live to be a hundred. Amen. As it is appointed unto man who wants to die. And after this, the judgment. Everybody's so worried about dying. Amen. Dying. Amen. Ain't the end of it. Amen. If you die. Amen. You can be alright. Amen. You can die of this corona. Or you can die of a heart attack. Amen. That ain't the end of it. Amen. The worst part is if you die are you saved or are you lost I got peace today if I live I'm the Lord's and if I die I'm the Lord's I'm glad to be saved well it's good to be able to testify for the Lord just a few minutes he's been good to me you preachers come on and preach, amen. I don't get ahead of nobody. I didn't even come to get in the way, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm glad to be saved today. 
I'm glad to know who holds the morrow. Hey, man, I'd be scared to death, Doug, if I wasn't saved today, not knowing that my soul and my sins were under the blood. Hey, man, I thought about it. I was coming over here earlier. I, I don't understand how people, I, hey, I don't know where they go. I thought about Doug. I don't know where they go. I don't know where they go. Amen. I don't understand. Amen. When something happens, immediately my mouth starts calling on Jesus. When something starts happening to me or my family or on the job, amen, no matter what it is, immediately I start saying, Lord, Jesus, would you help us? If I see a little baby sick, I say, Lord, would you help them? Amen. I know we got good doctors. I know we got good physicians. I'm not knocking them. Amen. But you know what? We're all going to leave here sometime. Amen. Are we going to be calling on the name of the Lord? Or are we going to be calling on something? Amen. That can't help us. Amen. You need to be saved today. You need to have assurance. Amen. In your heart. Doug preached a message here a while back. Are you insured beyond the grave? Amen. They say, insurance. Uh, uh, Doug, they sell it every day. Uh, uh, you can go get a policy uh, and it'll help you if your house uh, uh, gets hit with a flood. Uh, amen. It'll help you uh, if your car gets in a wreck. Uh, it'll help you uh, if something bad happens. Uh, they've even got health insurance. Uh, amen. And life insurance uh, uh, to take care of your family uh, if you die today. Uh, amen. But it won't do you uh, uh, one bit of good uh, uh, to have hundreds of thousands on the way if you die lost. The only insurance I read about that I know can help a man beyond the grave is the blood of Jesus. And it's insurance that don't fail. Somebody may, may, may have you a policy and they may not pay it. They may can't pay it. They may go out of business. But Jesus is the only one that can make a promise and keep that promise. He won't come short. Dad preached last week he's not slack concerning his promises. The Lord's not slack at all concerning his promises. I thought about a lot of people there. They're trying to shut the doors on the churches, and it ain't just because Corona. Hey, man, they got other agendas. They want the church doors shut. Hey, man, these people want the church doors shut. Hey, man, they want the preachers. Hey, man, to shut up. Go home and sit down. Hey, man, they don't want. Hey, man, nobody to be saved. They don't want to hear about hell, Doug. They don't want to hear about hell. They don't want to hear about it. Don't preach about hell. Hey, man, that body bothers my conscience. Amen. It hurts my heart a little bit. Amen. But I'm a preacher. I got to declare all the gospel and hell's in there. Amen. It hits a reality. It ain't a figment of my imagination. Amen. But it's real. Amen. And they'll go on wanting to shut your door. Amen. They want to go on and cause you to stop serving the Lord. But you know what I think? I believe the Lord's looking down. I believe the Lord's looking down, Doug. I believe He's sitting on high and He looks down low. And I believe as I was riding through a big storm the other night, I began to talk to the Lord. I said, Lord, I know that you ride on the wings of that wind. And those clouds are the dust beneath your feet. And there ain't nothing that's hid before your eyes. And I ain't got no hiding place and I ain't looking for one. And I said, I'm glad I've got a relationship with a savior Amen. I'm glad he's in charge I'm not in charge I thought people's wanting to shipwreck everybody else but you know what when Pharaoh Doug started coming out of the children of Israel I thought this morning how he was chasing them and maybe you preachers come on I'll get out of the way in just a minute I promise I will but I want to tell you something these people want to stop God's people and they're wanting to put a stop to God's people. They're wanting to put a stop to the preaching. They're wanting to put a stop to the singing. They're wanting to just flat out put a stop to the name of Jesus being spread. Amen. They want it to stop. But I thought about his Pharaoh and his men and his mighty army was chasing after Moses and the children of Israel. The Bible said he looked down. He saw them down there. But God saw them down there. He saw what they done. 
And he looked down, and I believe he saw them. And you know what he done? He waited till they got right into the midst of the sea. And he said he drove those chariots. They drove them hard, and they was a running out of the children of Israel. And he troubled them, and he took their wheels right off the chariots. <clears throat> that thought hit me this morning. I don't know why. But I want to tell somebody today, the devil may be <clears throat> chasing after you, but the Lord take his wheels off. The Lord take his wheels off. The devil may be right on your heels. And you may feel like you're in a storm and you're in a battle and you don't know how you can go on for the Lord. And, and you know the enemy is right on your heels, feels like he's climbing up your back. But I'm here to tell somebody today that the Lord will take his wheels off as sure as I'm standing right here today. And when he takes the wheels off, <clears throat> they might be destroyed. Because they wasn't one of them left alive, Doug. They said, well, God's a God of love. He don't do things like that. Well, you need to read the rest of your Bible. Right. Declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Right. Well, let me tell you something. God separates his people from other people. From pagans, it's people against God. And God has got a, a seal for his people. Amen. And when they're chasing out of the God's people, he said, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Amen. I read about a man one time, Doug, it put forth his arm, amen, toward a prophet of God, and his arm withered up and it dried up. He couldn't even pull it into himself because he was ready to touch the Lord's anointed. And he said, entreat for the Lord for me, pray for me that my arm be restored, and the man of God being an humble man, which Christians are, he prayed the Lord, he entreated him, and he restored his arm to him. But you know what? It didn't make the prophecy that he prophesied null and void that it wasn't going to happen either. But I want to tell you something. When the devil's chasing after you, he's on your heels. God is going to step in between him and you. I just got that little thought. These preachers come on preach. I know it's Easter, and I hope they got something good to, to feed us with. I know they will. But I just want to tell somebody before I sit down that God's got you. He's got you. You don't let go of him. Don't turn around to the left side or to the right side or be fearful and look back and worry about it. God's got you. You hold on to God. Tammy, you sing that song all the time, holding on to the best thing I ever found. You know what he is, Tammy, the best thing I ever found. And I want to hold on to him, Mom, all the way until they lay me down or until he steps out and comes to get us. But I thought these people doing some chasing, maybe they need to hear too, Doug. If you're chasing one of God's people, and you just ain't got nothing else to do but to chase God's people, and you just ain't got nothing better to do, amen, than to just keep hounding one of God's people, I'm going to tell you that God's about to take your wheels off. God will take your wheels off, and you won't even worry about chasing nobody else. You'll wonder how you're going to get around yourself. Now, I feel that, and I'm going to tell you, I want to give that to somebody. I don't, I don't have Facebook, and I don't sit and watch the news all day. I just pray and read my Bible, Doug, and I'm telling you what God says. You're chasing one of his, you better watch, because when you catch him, what are you going to do with him? Because Jesus loves his people, and God protects his people. I know we take a lot of things. I know you do, and you're going you're gonna to suffer some hard things because you're a Christian. It's not only given to believe on him, but it's also given to suffer for his name's sake. I believe that. But after you've endured some suffering and you've endured some hardness as a good soldier, and you've walked for the Lord, and you, and you put up with it, and you've looked to the Lord, and you, and you feel like somebody, no doubt today, feel like I've come to the end of the rope, and I've held on as long as I can, Doug, and it's a killing me, and I can't take no more. I, amen. I need you, Lord. I'm telling you today that the Lord is getting ready to step right between you, uh, amen, and the enemy, uh, and the wheels are going to fall off. Wheels are going to fall off of his chariot because God ain't deaf and he ain't blind. He's got eyes and he can see and he's got ears and he can hear. He's not a little God of wood and stone that somebody's carved out. He's the great I am. And he's alive forevermore. And he loves you today. 
And I'm going to tell you something. I believe as good Christians and as good Christians and as other Christians and these people get detoured sometimes by other things, we need to get our eye off of somebody else, get our eye on our own self, and go for our own self. He'd let every man, his daddy was talking about earlier, and everybody work out your own salvation, amen, in fear and in trembling. That's right. That means the fear of the Lord and tremble. The devils, they believe and they fear and they tremble too. And they're not going to be saved. But we can be saved today. And I'm telling you about I'm talking to these people that are saved today, but they're wearied with the battle. And they're wearied with life. And there's no doubt somebody, somewhere today, right now, Doug, I feel that somebody, maybe a bunch of somebody's, is right to the end of the road. And they feel like the devil is hounding them. He's drug them down. And they're flat on their back and can't even go no farther. Well, the Bible said when you've done all you can do to stand, when you've done all to stand, stand, therefore. You stand, therefore. God said that vengeance was his. He'll repay. You don't got to go out or nobody. You know what? You'll find more peace and more joy, and I'm going to try to get out of the way, more peace and more joy even though you know they're doing you wrong and they're hurting you and you know they are and you know they're beating you down and you know what somebody's doing wrong. It may be a, a, a financial situation. They're cheating you. It might be a promotional. Somebody's knocked you around, took what you had. It might be a spouse cheating on you. It might be somebody left you for nothing or took everything you had. I don't know, but I'm going to tell you something. The best thing you can do is just stand with the Lord. And let the Lord take care of your battle. And you'll find more peace than you've ever found when you let the Lord fight your battle. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. And he said, I shall not want. That means he's going to supply all of your needs. I believe he'll do that today. Come on, preachers, and preach. I don't get ahead of nobody. One of y'all come on and preach. Doug, come on and preach, brother Kenny, daddy, somebody. I don't get ahead of nobody.